Hey, it's Frank and Min, and we are doing a review. And so today's topic is gonna to be about Solval. I'm actually purchased recently two Solval SV06s, an SV06 base and an SV06 plus. I didn't necessarily want to wait for both of them to arrive, but they're here now. So we're actually going to be unboxing the SV06 today, reviewing some of the features and characteristics that it has, who it might be geared for, and why you might purchase it, and maybe what sort of performance you could expect to get out of it. They said this video is actually sponsored by Solvo. I may be receiving remuneration for this review and for the review of the class. You might be asking, who am I? Who is this Frankenman? All right, so my first YouTube video was in 2013, and it was of a Rep Rep Pressa Mindel 2. Hello, world. <clears throat> This is a video response to um, the Cressa Mendel 2 assembly video from Northwest Rep Rep. Rig, um, some of the plastic that basically comes with the uh, Z axis mount by tubing. Basically, I just cut it to really small lengths, like you know, this size here. Um, and I just wanted to do it to kind of act as an extra layer of insulation uh, for the screws. Um, so that's kind of how I did it. Um, just posting this for anybody who got frustrated when they saw that the mounts didn't exactly match, but I think this should work well. Um, please uh, leave any comments if you have any. Um, that was the first time I dwelt into 3D printers. Uh, I then pivoted into Bitcoin, and I stayed in Bitcoin for a long time, but I switched back into 3D printers recently. And so I started doing YouTube content uh, regarding all sorts of things, uh, from cannabis to a little bit of Bitcoin, but now mainly 3D printer content uh, for the while. Uh, I love printing things. Uh, you may ask yourself, well, why do you want to get a Solval SV06? And if your answer was to print guns or gun replicas, such as airsoft replicas, then that would probably be a good answer. Otherwise, I would imagine you would be buying a 3D printer to print all sorts of things. Um, business opportunities, possibly trinkets around the house, possibly utility items around the house or in the car or in the shed or for whatever application you may find. It's really a new dawning, an era for additive manufacturing where you can bootstrap and quickly uh, at home get things done and get orders processed and get things built and made, uh, tailor fit and do rapid prototyping. And from rapid prototyping to completed product as well. I mean, it, like I said, it's an amazing time. Who was the SVO6 made for? I would say it was made for the budget conscious person who desired to not necessarily a uh, Prusa Mark III. This has the same X, Y dimensions, but it actually has a higher Z dimension. However, I found that higher Z dimension doesn't necessarily translate into greater usability or unless that is your main forays to make large sculptures or large replicas or cosplay pieces perhaps, then perhaps this would give you the edge out. Right. You may possibly want to consider an Ender, right? Or perhaps you already own a few Enders, like as I do. Why did I get this? I picked up the Solval SV06 because I wanted to, you know, have pretty much the, the Prusa clone. I was looking for kind of like a workhorse printer that you know, I could see if I could put this really to its paces. Said it had sort of all the various upgrades and bells and whistles, and I, I liked it. So that's kind of why I went for the plus. This happened sort of simply because, like I said, I was given an opportunity for remuneration, so I went for the opportunity for remuneration. It's nice, it's pretty, pretty typical, like a, like I said, just normal ender sort of stuff you'd see. Okay, this is kind of what I'm seeing out of the box here. User manual. Let's look at this quick start guide. Nice. They gave us the, a sheet. They gave us a sheet to try to level with. We are using the bimetal throat, so setting the retraction distance to high may cause clogging in our tests. Distance of half a millimeter, so that's basically like disable the retraction. All right, that's pretty. It's pretty low. Okay, done. Yeah, I had mine set to like two, so I'll go ahead and try that out. 
Oh wow, see they're also suggesting an enclosure. Yeah, which, you know, it's good, it's nice. Oh, that's cool, I appreciate that. Let's see, what are we looking for? Okay, so I do notice something off the bat, right, with this, uh, the Solval SV06. I don't know if maybe the i3 is that, because like I said, I don't actually own an i3. But I see here right away that this really reminds me of an Ender. I don't know. Uh, let's see, what is the price point? I think this is 300, right? About the time I bought it. You can get that Ender for, I don't know, if I'm buying it new, maybe 250, I suppose, on a coupon. But realistically, like, you should be buying that Ender for. I mean, a really cheap Ender, like a Pro, like a 3 Pro, you should be getting it for, you know, a hundred bucks. You should not be spending more than a hundred bucks for a 3D printer right now like that. But this, it looks nice, it's pretty new. I, I kind of like, you know, that, that's pretty cool. It's not T-slots, you know, that's pretty cool. What have we got here? That's pretty, that's pretty decent. Let's, uh, let's jump to the, the manual for a bit, right? Notes. Do not use the printer any other way than described here in order to avoid personal injury. Hmm. Okay, so use it as a printer, got it. Well, that's decent. This looks like it's direct. That's awesome. Okay. So yeah, like, I mean, looking through, the, these are nice. These are really good, like, deep, detailed, adequate directions. Let's see, do I have some Ender 5 directions? It was kind of the same, you know, it was like a book. Will I edit this out? Will I not? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, here we go. Ender. Here we go. So you see, just in com just for comparison to you, right? This is them. This is what you probably would have gotten in comparison. I mean, it's okay, you know? Like, it's not, like I'm trying to tell you, it's not like it's crazy different, but it's good, you know? Like, it although this is like, this is what you're getting versus, uh, let's slow through the assembly point, right? <laughs> I don't know, I'd say, uh, yeah, I'd say it feels like it's just a bit more detailed. Like, they kind of wanted to slow down, make sure you get, get it down right. That's good. Uh, let's look for the whole contents page, where it kind of shows you how everything is broken down, the equipment. Package list, page four. That's, that's what'll tell you what you need to know. Okay, yeah, it's not bad. I don't know, let's see, um, yeah, lighting, lighting, yeah. Nah, it's, it's I'm talking to myself, right? Because I'm, I'm lighting. Right, so. Here we go. Is that too much lighting? Yeah, it's too much lighting. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm, my, I'm, I'm tricking myself. See, I'm used to the phone because the phone has a viewfinder. And it's like, no, I need to point it towards the camera. All right, okay. So you see, that's like, I, I appreciate it. It's not bad. It's truly not bad at all. Thank you. All right, so, yeah, you know, we have manuals, we're, we're manual people, right? I mean, physical, we like to manually get into this stuff, right? The nitty gritty of what's here. Okay, it's decent. What have we got here? All right. Uh, spool holder roll. Oh, nice, okay, yeah. Yeah, see, like, I don't, I don't own a Presa, uh, and, like I said, this is still on that itch to want to have a Mark IV phone. I mean, not a Mark IV, Mark III. Oh, it's already... Yeah, okay, so the power supply is here in one whole piece, so I got to take this whole thing out. What have we got? Okay, so that's cool. One whole parent thing in this right here says US plug, so that's why it says EU plug or... I don't know, all sorts. Okay, cool. It's a toolkit and the sample school. Let's take a look. So I don't have the desire to open up or compare the rest, but this is what comes in your kit. Let's go ahead and go for the obvious out of the way oohs and ahs. Okay, it's nice, it's a little different. I'll show you the uh equivalent for another, uh, right? This is what you'd be getting otherwise. It's pretty cool. All right, so what else have we got in here? 
Uh, okay, yeah, so these are the same, uh, yeah, man. Whoever made these, the person who is in charge of making these, you're making a killing off of doing this. Because these are just a ton of these, like, too many of them. But, you know, the one I have broke, so I'll go ahead and probably retire it. Okay, similar, oh wow, it came with some tweezers, that's cool. I wonder what I'll need to use that for. And the, the acupuncture needle, of course. This is for the spool holder. I wonder what the big thing is for. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that the way this is a little different is that with the um, enders, you have the, I don't know what you call them, the hex bolt cap nuts or whatever, right? That kind of go into the corner on the side. I'm not the one out for you to show you, but uh, you're just gonna have to trust me on this. So it uses sort of the same level of screws all around, but it seems like this, uh, by default, is going to be using what's this? Like it looks like it. Oh, I just got to take everything out so you can see. Cause uh, why describe? Do okay. Oh, okay. This is separated. Okay, cool, cool. So you see, this is going to be the top, and extrudes and just nice. Okay, so let's let's talk about this, right? So clearly this is the, f nah, I don't really know for sure. I was gonna say clearly this is the front because it's here, but it's also here as well. Uh, I would think this is the front and this would be the back because you wouldn't necessarily want to show the, you wouldn't want to have the, the axes exposed to the front and stuff, you know? Although, it would have to be this way because this is where the extruder would go. So yeah, it's gonna be this way after all. It's funny, it's kind of a design decision, but whatever. It's fine. Oh, you know, I'm kind of close. I wonder, here, I got an idea. What if I zoom in a bit? Oh wow, look at that, it's all detailed. It's pretty nice, huh? Yeah, as you say, zoom in a bit and then try to shove from over here. There we go, yeah. See? Oh, and here, this is the plus move it out of the way there. Yeah, yeah, see, okay, cool. It's not bad, right? Like, uh, other points I'd like to show on this, um, the Z-axis connectors, right? Pretty run the pretty nice. Make sure when you run this the first time, before you run this, tighten these, okay? Here too, uh, on this dual, be, uh, YZ2. There's a tensioner right here, okay? I don't, I don't really wanna mess with that. This might be good to go already. Right. Yeah, see, this feels pretty, pretty good. He's stiff and good, so I'm not worried about that. We're gonna put this down right here. Okay. Oh, nice. Is this uh, connected? Yeah, this connected to something underneath. You gotta be careful here. There's uh, this PEI sheets here. I kind of want to pull it off, but I really don't want to mess with it. I want to get everything figured out. Oh, okay, cool. There's a little uh, gasket barrier here, see? Should I reset the camera or not? I don't know, yeah, I'm gonna reset the camera because I don't want you guys to just be staring up my chest the whole time, right? What's the fun of that? You're like, oh, no, keep it going. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, right, where were we? We're taking this out. Nice. All right. Okay. I think that's everything. That's this is the printer. We'll put this down here. Let's see. Is there anything else I'm missing here? Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. There's an extruder, right? Nice. I appreciate this. this is completely separate. And this is a leveling sensor right here. Okay. Amazing. Great. And this is. Looking like an all-metal hot end extruder. Okay, cool. So this should be able to dial in hot stuff. I'm pretty sure it said that on the top. But the thing is, like, I don't really pay attention to the marketing stuff all that much, you know? I like just look at the thing itself to actually know. Let's see, do you guys see anything? Yeah, I don't see anything on the top. I'll check, uh, check it out if we put it together. Yeah, that's everything. All right, so here we are. This is it. Power. 
This likely is the controller board, so this is gonna go to the extruder. Does this, uh, this connect to something? I don't think it should. Maybe, maybe it goes this way? Ostensibly? Yeah, this is why you gotta read directions, folks. It's important. Okay. Here's the package, there's the tools. This is nice, I really like this. I believe technically this could be considered double-sided. There isn't a, uh, but there isn't a finish. There's, so what you're gonna wanna get though, there's like a special material you can get, like um, a film and you can stack it over this and that's what you would wanna get to use on this. Um, and that I believe should work fine. Although this sheet, I mean, this, it's a nice feeling sheet. I like it. It, it seems solid, you know? It's very solid. Um, all right. Yeah, huh? Well, there's nothing to do because you don't have the directions with you, so you have no idea what you're doing, right? I mean, I got an idea of how the stuff goes together, but, you know, let's go. Oh look, it has the steps here. Step three. Oh wow, the same little like uh, bump stick too. I see it's like I think it maybe I wonder if it's all the same one company. Step two, step four. Okay, step one. Okay, so it looks like step one's likely gonna be the uh, uh see I was talking a big game, but look at me, that's I was wrong. So, I didn't know what I was saying, for sure. Let's see. Like these, it's weird. I don't know what this big like wheel is for. I'm not really sure. But yeah, like all the fastening points are just kind of regular run of the mill screws. So this is the same thing that you get with an inner. It's not necessarily better. Oh, there's these kind of um, like weird wheel points, but uh, okay. Okay, so each step has its own little layer steps. The gantry, okay. So the gantry, the base, and the M4s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I got it. Yeah, because that's going to be the front. How does this work? At minimum, I'm going to say it works like that. See where these uh, raw parts of, where these like exposed parts are, cut parts, is obviously going to be where it goes. So they probably just fit right into the little grooves, right? Boom, done. So, question though is, now what? 180 minutes, folks, what is that? Three hours? Still down to 30 minutes. It's like, okay, it's confusing because there's like these open holes here, but it's like, we go right here. Uh, okay. Really want a washer, I don't know where, but I'm guessing over here. So I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it this way. Now I wish I had one of those little tools where I could just screw the thing, right? You know, with a, like a power tool. Although those aren't necessarily very uh, good. Um, I'll just bring this over to the edge and that'll get me the angle I want. The angle for the dangle that I want. Okay. Oops. Well. I guess I'm gonna be without a fourth screw, huh? The gantry will always be just a little bit of a gamble, right? It's already tight, okay. Very cool. Yeah, but I'm liking these suspenders, they're pretty nice. It's a kind of new thing. Be careful, it makes you, makes you old. I feel like suspenders on the spot makes you feel, nah, I don't know, that's just, that's just me talking crap. Uh, okay. Alright. Oh. 
go this way. Let's just let this hang on the side for a bit, it's fine. I'm gonna kill the printer, and if it does, there you go, that's your bad QA right there. Why did it do that? Shouldn't be doing that. Uh, okay, go. Where's the, I'm not gonna worry about that right now, I'm gonna figure it out in a moment. X. It's like super logical, it's cool. Because uh, it keeps that going deck like down like the next layer of like screw, you know, that's cool. I appreciate that. What this? And that just slips on or something? I don't know what the heck. So when, I think it no, I think I have this confused. I think this something Oh, I think this goes up there. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. There we go. So then this has to go there. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. See? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. It's not that I'm gonna get it. It's just need a moment, you know? I'm a bearing. Whoa, there's really not a lot of... Yeah, there we go. You really want to be careful with uh, these linear rods that uh, look like, like giant screws. Because, you know, if you bend them, it's over. I mean, they, you know, they're, sturdy, they're supposed to be strong and sturdy, and they usually are for the most part. Um, you saw how they shifted, it was like a freaking fortress. I'm not going to show you, like, I'm not going to go through the steps of a, or I don't know, maybe the next one uh, on the plus, I'll go ahead and kind of show you a top down view of like how I, what I see. But I didn't feel like, the need or desire to do that now because you know I'm sure there's other people that have been doing that. Yeah no come on we're good we're good I don't want to mess with anymore. Alright uh so what is it gonna tell me connections or no nah, it's got to be the extruder now right yeah probe use the probe as the so use the probe as the baseline right so probe this way this way okay and so on all the different little things that look like heat inserts they go into that okay Huh, that's interesting. This looks like it's ABS. An observation. It's like not even necessarily uh, 3D printed. Or no, nah, it could, could be. There's like, like no sort of nothing on it. But then again, you know, you could just use the thing to like vapor, you know, vapor deep depth position thing and it's like good to go and you never see no, like what layer line, you know, kind of thing. Please don't do this like, because this is a much heavier hot end. <laughs> Breaking mint. Please don't uh, break this. That could have been bad. <sighs> or it wouldn't have really been bad, it just would have been. That could have been inconvenient. There you go. Uh, okay. It's too. Should have put some red Loctite on here. That would have been the correct solution, right? Am I missing something? No, no, no. Seems right. I'm pretty sure that little side pin and actors. Oh, wow, this is already pretty baller. I wouldn't want to do anything to this. This already seems pretty solid. Like, well, maybe an enclosure, but I wonder if that enclosure would work. It would be, it'd be so rad if it could. Uh, I'd love to know. All right. 
I think that's what this is set for now, right? The control box. So turn it unlocked. Drop the control box in there. Lock it. Okay, and the filament on my Got it. Alright, cool. So, uh. What? Oh, I think I missed this. I think I missed the filament holder. I think it's uh, somewhere close by. Let's look for it. No, it's not it. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, here. I found it. It's right here. It's right here. Boom. With a bit of sample filament and the power. Let's go ahead and get that going, right? Okay, so. Unlock. Oh, okay. Neat. Although, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't like it. Oh, okay, it was unlocked. Like, cause the, the shit's back here, right? And so, well, it's probably not bad. Like, it's, it's fine. Like. Like you complain about that, it's kind of kind of shitty, you know. Fuck that. There's way more bigger shit to be bitching about than that, in my opinion. Okay, it's good. It says X. So, dang it, go to X. Okay, I'm pretty sure this goes to here then. Is that the right way? Yeah, it's the right way. Uh, I wonder which one this goes to. Probably the middle one, but maybe the first one. Usually goes to the middle. Um, what have I got? Oh, so this is the Y tension. Got it. Okay. Figured it out. I wonder if there's any... What is this for? I probably don't want to touch it or mess with it, really. Oh, I think this has got to be the... This is the tensioner for the, uh... For the, um... Tensioner for the uh, the filament. Sweet. See, you're a broken screwdriver, but you still have use to me. I still love you. Okay. Uh, so this probably goes like this. This probably goes like this. All right. Go with this way. I'll go with this way. That doesn't really mean all of them were in a way. Uh, I found the Ender 5 Pro was easy to assemble. It took a little time, but you know, it was the directions felt, you know, good enough. These uh these were good directions too. Like these are actually really good. Uh, I probably skipped over the bulk of them because of experience. Sorry about that, but it's life. Go or tighten or do anything. There should. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There was a, there was a sprocket I saw, right? A little thingy. Who knows? It's gone now. Is this part of? No, this is uh, different. Okay. Here we go. Let's try. It. Oh, let's see what nozzles they pack in. Is it just a replacement for? Oh, and this ain't the, this is not, not at all compatible with the thing that I was thinking about. These, uh, still volcano nozzles, Let's see if they take one out. Lord, <laughs> that was never gonna work. Look at that. Look at that. No, that was never gonna friggin' work. Okay. Um, yeah, no problem. Try these with something else. Uh, I'll probably keep them eventually. They'll work for some I got. 
or eventually I'll buy the right thing. Uh, what does this say? 0.4, this is 5.4, womp womp. I don't want 0.4. I would like a 0.6, please. Although, I'm not gonna fuck with that right now. But, when you have a brand new, like brand brand new printer, this is usually the ideal time to switch it. So, fine, I will switch it. See if I can break it right. Uh, let's see. Let's go through my bag of goodies, or my box of goodies, to find what we got. Spin parts and strings, Capricorn tubing, and and uh, we're looking for the big, big grand bag of. Uh, of nozzles. Here we go, the big, big grand bag of nozzles. It'd be nice if I could find the hardened ones in there off the bat, but I don't even know if they're here or not. But if they are, my bad, I'm taking one. Well, I'll skim. Womp womp. Okay, One millimeter, yeah, that's that's rich. That's gonna work, huh? Point three. Mm. Tell you what, leave this alone. Don't touch them. Like, let's go ahead and just keep this at its stock point four and see how she blows, right? Jeez, it's already got dirty in like one one run run right. <laughs> Uh, right. Not terribly worried about the nozzle. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just try off the bat to print something, cause you know why not? Done. Okay. Cool. Um, that goes there, come on, where's, so Z2, okay, cool. Z2, so you note I'm not touching these, you don't want to touch them. Z1. I think we're done. Uh, oh no, I gotta connect this, right? Didn't say which, let's figure it out. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, huh. Okay. Wow, oh, they're just clicking the day. Will he drop the printer? Will he drop the printer? Uh, let's see. Um, doesn't say. Really don't say. Okay, I'm gonna say you just want to go ahead and run the middle one. Yeah. Or I'll try to run the closest one. Wait. Three, two, one. Yeah, I'll just run the closest one. See what it does. Shouldn't be a problem. If it's a problem, I will just plug it to the two and then the one. <coughs> but if it doesn't work on two, and I have to plug it to one, that's a problem because that means I had to like you know, butts with this. Or wait, maybe. Oh, huh, this, uh, this adjusts a little. But, it, like, it's meant to be on the corner here. I'm gonna try the middle one. After all, yeah, I'm gonna just go for the middle one, because that's how I believe it's set up on these, right? No, it's set up on the one that's next to it. And you are set up on the one that's next to it. You are set up on the one that's next to it. Okay, so now it's on the closest one. It's not on the far, it's on the middle. So I'm gonna do what I first did and just have it on the closest one. Cool. 
And I'm gonna remove the newness. Cause that's awesome. Love doing that. All right. Um, I plan to put this over there. And uh, this corner right over here, as you can see, it's already a mess again. But I suppose for now, with being settled, like probably just like see where it's looking like what's it's like right here. I had an idea of how big it was, but you know, I didn't like really like I really like, no, no, no. It's not plugged into anything, so let's just see the fit the fitment now. Without wiring, right? It's not bad. Like this. Originally, I was like, have two of them, right? One or the other. You think the plus could fit on here too? That would be that would be amazing if we could have the plus fitting on here too. Wow. Uh, you know what? Let's get it going. Sims. Sometimes it feels like life be like that. Sometimes every Sunday night, I have responsibilities in the morning, but it's already the morning somewhere. Okay, so we've got our file, which is gonna be here. We're gonna just look at what we've got. You know, some of their POS filament, whatever this is. Do I want to use this or I want to use something else? I mean, I got a few things. Let's go ahead and save this for something else. I got plenty of other filament that can just go ahead and uh, take the spot just fine. All right. So here we are. Boom. Right, uh, I forgot to do this. This would be helpful. And I forgot this too. Hmm. Does this, does this need anything? Is this, is this necessary for anything? No, it's connected. This is. I think that might be for maybe a different fan. I don't know. I'm not really sure because this connection point is already connected to the back of the board. This came with it. It just, put, just kind of just slumped right in. I think this is probably for some sort of expansion. I'm not even worried about it. Okay, so we are going to try to zoom in the camera. <clears throat> Then let's try this too. Does that even do anything? It's marginal. What if I like, there we go, let me do that. It's a little better, yeah, a little bit. <gasps> yeah, if 
thought thought everything would be ready, but I didn't realize I was gonna switch. But it's all good. I like this, you know. This is uh, solid. All right, so we forgot to um, install the you know the data cable for the extruder, so we're doing that now. For example, just open. Well, this doesn't really fit. It like barely fits. Okay, cool. Plunk in. And when you plunk in these, usually like to come on top, and that's good. And just pinch. It should be good. Solid. Okay. Cool. It's a sensor. Sort of sensor. I think we're ready to go. <coughs> it's a good thing. Do you think I can get that plus on here? I would love to know. It's a bigger dimensions. I don't think so. I think uh, I think it's much wider. But I'm gonna find out. Okay. Oh, where's oh, the supplies over here, right? So, oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So, in this case, just like that. Run it underneath everything. Plug her in. Plug her in. Problem is, I don't want to pick it up, and the power is actually like, nope, I'm dead. Here, I'm gonna do this. What gets the camera if you can't use it, right? Nice, 45%. Okay. All right, so here we are, right? Yeah, see, it's pretty much essentially like on par with uh, with the Ninder. So let's see, does this change the? Yeah, see that changes the flow rate. Okay, let's go and check what we got here. So we got bed leveling. Let's just do that now. We just went to set. Plumbing requires machine heat up automatically. Yeah, that's fine. Proceed. What do we got? Come on. Oh, so literally, I just that baseline is you have to kind of have everything warmed and cued to go. Okay. All right. Not sure how I feel about that. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get her loaded and see what that, that situation's like, right? I'm probably going to put the camera down just to be able to actually do what I'm doing. If I'm able to get this going with one hand, I'd be shocked. Oh, look at that. Stroke of luck, it's available. Okay. So this goes in here. Oh, whoops. Is it pull or push or? Oh yeah, there we go. That's how it does, it pulls out. Okay, so yeah, I gotta. Yeah, I gotta put you down. Put him down. <laughs> All right. And then I'm gonna set up the oh, AC again because, right? I'd like to be able to charge the camera so it doesn't just die suddenly. Oh, that's as far as it goes, it's funny. I'm like further, but no, that's in the middle. And now it's zoomed in all the way. Oh. All right. Come on, bed leveling. Auto home. Proceed. Did I miss something? Did I miss something? The wives already parked it. So 
Sometimes I'm tutored, but I mean, that's just me. Okay, so this is no media, so let's put this media. At least it doesn't feel like it's gonna slip, I appreciate that. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. So, yeah, I mean, it says there's like nothing in the cart, so there's that. Um, so, what's the point of the cart? There's nothing in it. I mean, is it a firmware update? I sure hope it's not. Oh, wait, what was that? Lupo screen. There was something there that was like. Oh, uh, look at that, okay. There's a whole bunch of stuff here, okay, cool. It's interesting, so I had to restart the printer for it to catch that, it didn't catch that, like, with it on the way. All right, let's try this out for the here. This is insane in a way, right? Because I, uh, oh, okay. You like just kind of zoomed in. Let me zoom you out. There we go. Yeah, so this is insane in a way because, uh, like, we're, uh, we're gonna just go ahead and try to run this G code without even, like, leveling the printer. We're gonna see how this runs. Nice. So the bed temp got to temp really fast. That was amazing. Um, it's at 60 degrees on the bed temp here. Normally the bed temp on my uh, Andrews takes forever. Like, uh, two, three minutes. This only took maybe about 40 seconds. Mm, okay, three minutes is a, bit, is a bit harsh. Okay, I'm gonna say it takes maybe about two minutes. But you saw that, like that was fast. I didn't even bother clocking. I'll figure out, maybe I'll put this So, I mean, other than what I just saw right now, like that was a little awkward, but it was good to go. The fact that it reset, I think I appreciated that. Um, Starscream appreciates that too. So. I would love to, oh, but it wouldn't work like that. I was like, I would love to take another like card and run it, but that. The dimensions would work and the extrusion might work, but the thing is, I have no, I have no point for like nozzle stuff. All my stuff is 0.6. Okay, it says the extruder's pretty much here, so let's see what you're about to try to do. Science, right? I feel like I heard somebody said, somebody said that's just the, what it does. Like it, it jams towards the thing, that's the point. Now how is this gonna work? Like I have no film in here, it's just kinda just chilling, dude.
Why is it blowing my mind? Because I didn't need to be start leveling or nothing. I didn't need to start leveling. Even with this little auto bed leveling, I would expect it to be something. Oh, that's cool. It actually gives me a little points of percent on this one. Alright, come on. Let's kill this. Stop the print. Rocket, whatever. It's a, it looks like the Space One. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh. That's so funny. That one's fine. Alright, well, so I have that in. That's good. Um, we need to get the, the surface good, you know? So, bed level, auto home, proceed. Whatever that thing was, where it's just like, shh, that's unacceptable. Like, that, that's unacceptable. Like, I don't want to destroy the separate motors. The fuck? So, in theory, like, the bed leveling should make it so I shouldn't need to do the thing with the test. And so, with this now done, I'm going to retry to do the bitchy and see how it flies. Right, and so while we're waiting for this, let's talk about plans. Um, as I stated, this is going to be a workhorse partner. So I'm likely going to be using this to get both of my jobs done. Um, I'm going to be using this to print some of the main fourth builds that I have next month that are going to be upcoming. Um, they decided to, to, to really put it through its paces. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but there's actually three majors right here that are boxed up, uh, ready to be used, so it's not like I, you know, I need it in, like, the printers, like, I've got plenty of printing, uh, capacity, um, but I am actually open to, to more clients and doing business, and if you're interested in, uh, trying to figure out, you know, something that'd be viable to build, you can contact me and I can help you short, short change that path and, um, get you some, some builds done, so that's, that's what we do. Yeah, freaking mint prints. Well, I will note that doing a little bed leveling portion, it's not doing a lot of uh, scraping, so that's definitely a very good thing, you know? I'm wondering kind of why, why does it do that? Usually that's an indicator of um, the steppers being disabled and then you moving it and then trying to rerun the print at a later point. Um, or trying to, you know, move it and it that port in zero, which you already moving towards the edge of the bed, so it's just like grrrr and going over. And then the reverse, too. Um, tricking your printer, being the trick. See that? That's unacceptable. thoughts about this. I mean, overall, I think it's a good package. Uh, it seems pretty nice. Uh, however, it's kind of rough around the edges. The fact that that happens is out of the box is bad. Um, it says they're setting storage. So let me figure out, this is actually in set to its own position. So what I can do is I can figure out the configuration perhaps. Uh, settings. Oh, wow, look, it has a little PAD thing. Okay, um... Okay, where's that one? Alright, let's try this out. Friends, let's try to print this thing again. What's coming here? I should allow some nice little cell phones. Beer, that would be different, huh? Beer that tasted like gummy bears? The police would be all over that. Oh yeah, it's called Urban Mist. Uh, like, I'm kind of really like, don't know what to think. Um, let's go ahead and 
and take a moment to figure out if that's expected, okay? Why does my soul SV06 grind against the x-axis? You need to change your sensorless homeless homing setting. happening and that's fine like like I said this needs to be dialed in so that's no problem uh, we're gonna dial it in right now in real time I'll show you how to do that so what this needs uh, my, my boys and girls and furry little friends oh wow that's cool look it like shows me when the little sensor thing is like oh a little light on there like dare I say love I love it okay so what we need to do is we have to since that leveling, but what does that mean? I would say uh, what's auto zeal on? There's all this cool stuff that I need to figure out. I will go ahead and figure it out. So let's just quickly take the Z offset and dial it down. I'm gonna take it down 0.2 millimeters. Like down a layer high just to see what I get from it. So from there, what I like to do is this is Marlin-based firmware, so it's all gonna work kind of the same, I think. You go configuration, advanced, set home offsets. Offsets are good to go. Now you go back to print for media, the home menu, and then we try this Vinci code yet again. So how many Vinci's are we attempting now? How many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-
two, three, four benchies. This is the fourth benchie you did. You see, that's the beauty about 3D printing, right? Uh, fail fast, fail often. That's that's really kind of the way I would, I would propose that. Um, I bought this for $270. That is far, far more affordable than $800 or $900 that you'd be paying for the Mark III. Um, or I suppose you get the Mark IV. And the other thing is those are full-on kits, and so that's going to have a whole lot more of assembly sets in this. This is, this is essentially assembled for you. Um, and it's all really well self-contained when you look at it. Like, the computer guts is all right here. I mean, I suppose like if you really want it, and if it was feasible to do so, you upgrade this somehow to something more. I don't know if it's 32 bit or whatever bit it is in there. I imagine it's, you know, so I don't, I don't really know. Um, I think that 06 Plus probably has the nice remaining and a slightly bigger thing. It's, it claims to be faster printing, but I wonder if I've been, if we've been got in saying it's faster printing by virtue of saying it has a faster maximum print speed, not necessarily a faster, you know, not necessarily running Clipper firmware, but I believe it's running Clipper firmware native. This is clearly, you know, using Portland. I think Clipper by default needed a whole little different, like, fetch screen kind of screen thing, but I can figure that out and verify that. You see the editing if this here or not, that's all we know, right? 185, it's kind of low. I usually like to run mine 230, but it's running fine here. Yeah. A lot of drink on camera wire and a lot of smoke cameras on camera. I mean, that seems reasonable, right? I wish it wouldn't be stigmatized. It should be like normal. Like how cigarettes are considered normal. All our cigarettes considered normal. Any more of these days or not? I get it. I think the thing is that you're always going to have a different agenda so you can have a way of profiting from how they do it. Maybe those who are control side of your set of resources. Like the politicians. The politicians aren't they, I say they are the ones that are the Oh 
really like fucked up, but I wasn't supposed to do that. So I pick, I pressed auto Z line and now it's gonna do the whole little force that's going to have off that's that's Maybe it was Alright, I did the thing where I tried the auto home again and I tried to just kind of reset kind of everything and I'm gonna see if that will make it like print close to that again. We'll see. It's funny, right? Oh, see, did it. Uh, but I wonder what it was jamming on. Oh, it was jamming on this part here. So see, I think it's designed to do that. Is there like an X version of that somewhere? Not really. Okay. I wish there was like a 3D print part that kind of holds stuff it over. Kind of like the way the, um, the Creality Sprite Touch did it with there. So that would have been nice. Um, so, so make sure you do that. Uh, if you guys can provide a print or a way to hold this, so it's up. And if you can, I'm gonna have your shadow whatever. Be straight for resources and anyway. I mean, I actually do get it. I mean, time, right? Time is that precious resource. Seems good. Seems like it's down to 5. 4.95 is where it's at. Okay. Paper, 
nice cold on the floors. Does something like that exist here? No, something like that doesn't exist here because these are linear rails. Okay, the test doesn't work on this. Okay. Well, I'll figure out what the whole thing is with that and um, yeah. I follow the directions and that was on me. Um, I should have been paying attention to the guy here, right? And so the appropriate way to get things set up and going uh, once you're going is you're going to want to literally just kind of auto home, right? And you actually need to let it get warm first and then once it's home, it's warm, you kind of let it go to the auto home. And then once it auto homes, after you do the whole, you know, maneuver with um, auto Z align where it's pushing up against the roof to force it so that they're on the same tread, uh, you're going to have to do the whole probe Z offset like after the auto home happens. And so this happening is the offset to be able to be below the 10 that I initially got. And so now I kind of have it printing. I didn't run this last uh, leveling the up the bed step. We'll see if that mattered or not. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I think probably. I think it just accounts for differences in the bedding. I don't know if it matters or not. Yeah, it matters. So see, it's still way high. So let's stop. Yeah, because this is just, this is like ridiculous. Okay, so I didn't do the last step, which was to go level bed. Bed level. Oh, I don't know. Let's get it going. All right, it's been a couple hours. I think I have it dialed in now, though. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Basically, um, I found that following like the stock directions didn't really work for me. The reason being, uh, for some reason, like it was like it would give me a maximum of 20 millimeters to push the Z offset down, and it would just like limit out there. So it was 10, then it was 20, and. So like it wouldn't let me go further and so the way I got it to work was I had to go through the steps once again to just kind of push the gantry all the way up to the top and then all the way down and then from there I set it to auto home and then instead of adjusting the Z offset I just adjusted the Z like using motion adjusting Z downward. Doing that it allowed me to go beyond because it set it from zero rather than from negative 19. And so I found that I just, from that point, actually I'm skipping a step. What I had done was after I had it settled, I had also um, went ahead and set it as set the home offsets to that so it would reset it to zero, right? So after that had been done, I then went in and the settings and adjusted the layer height again um, by just kind of using motion and then kind of moving the Z down uh, millimeter by millimeter and then I found that it was negative 6.5 on top of the 19, so it was like nearly negative 25 millimeters down to get it to kind of be flush and level. And now at this point, it, I mean, it's working. Let's look and show you really quick here. So you can have a good, clear idea. Take you with me. Take you off the power. Rotate the viewfinder so I can see better. And here we are. I see, I mean, it's going pretty well. I noticed that this set goes flat, and that's fine, that's cool. Uh, but I noticed it at one point was going that way too on the stock Vinci, so I think it all depends. Uh, I also did notice that, so this isn't the file that came with the printer. I went ahead and just decided to get my own file, and I just started right away with some KF5 prints. I want the get the charging handle done and you know the HK slap nub done. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and work on. Right, I ended up using a, I think Mark III profile in Prusa Slicer and so that's kind of what's uh, what's doing what it's doing. And so it seems like it's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied. So I will let this continue to run and that's that. Final thoughts. Like I said, 
I felt like this is a pretty decent put together machine. I felt like, yeah, like you, you're getting your money's worth in overall what it is and what it's, you know, gearing itself to be. As a workhorse, I will give it, you know, some, some input. I will run it in its paces and I will let you know how it goes. Thank you for tuning. I really appreciate your time here on this channel if you've gotten this far. Please make sure to comment, like, or subscribe. It all helps. I appreciate you. Take care.